if you have a large sphere, imagine it's a perfect sphere, and that's it's radiating an electric field. A great question is, what's the field inside the circle? What's the field inside the sphere? And the answer is zero, everywhere. That's a real stunner that at the surface of the sun, let's say the sun is a charged particle, at the surface of the sun is radiating all this energy outward, but on the inside of the sun, there's zero net electric field. Okay, this has a correlation to gravity that I'd like to point out. In a, in a gravitational system, hold on, make sure I got the right things here. So in, in, an, in an electric system, you have zero field anywhere inside the sphere. If you have, uh, in a gravitational system, however, you're going to have a different kind of profile of gravitational field inside the center of the Earth, let's say, okay? So, because what happens is, if you imagine yourself going to the center of the Earth, most of us have been taught that at the center of the Earth, the gravitational field is really intense, it's really high, and all this matters down there, and there's intense gravitational field. It's not true. Do a little thought experiment and take yourself to the center of the Earth, and where is all the mass that's attracting you? Well, it's all around you in all directions. There's zero gravitational field at the center of the Earth. Even if, it, not even considering electric field phenomenon, but if it's just gravity as described to us, there's zero gravity at the center of the Earth. If it's electric, you're gonna get, you're gonna get zero field all the way to the center of the sphere. If it's gravitational, you're gonna get a chart that looks something like this. These two differences in, gra this would be a gravitational uh, analogy. And this would be an electric analogy of the forces at the center of the Earth. Look what happened with the Big Bang Theory. It went through a crisis when, uh, with the Hubble Space Telescope, they were getting all this, uh, these new, uh, uh, well, seeing further than they could see before, and uh, the stuff that was coming back was indicating that the Big Bang Theory was full of holes. But uh, that didn't last long. They, eventually, they came back and sort of uh, continued to believe in what they believed before. It's as if no nothing had ever happened. Uh, I personally don't think anything would uh, divert them from their current view. You know, it's sort of like uh, what the epicycle theorists were doing in Kepler's times four or five hundred years ago. Uh, in the days when they thought that the uh, Earth was the center of the universe and everything else rotated around it. Uh, and they were making adjustments to the planets uh, to say that planets were going in little circles as they uh, orbited the Earth. You know. Right. Uh, try, to basically trying to preserve their f framework. They're sort of like cannons that we should bow down to, uh, which is the way it's done now. It's almost like a religious faith. So... Um, you know, to start by deprogramming people from the previous thoughts, to say, okay, all this stuff that we learned is wrong. I don't have to show you any stinking bunch 